the variable overhead variances are also split into two parts. We've got your variable overhead rate variance and your variable overhead efficiency variance. If you note, these names, rate and efficiency, are the same words we use for our direct labor variances. The variable overhead rate variance is sometimes called the variable overhead spending variance. And this variance tells us whether more or less was spent on variable overhead than what we expected for the hours worked. For the variable overhead and fixed overhead, I don't expect you to evaluate the variances. However, you do need to know how to evaluate direct material, direct labor. I will show you these slides so that if you want to, you can go through them. However, I will not evaluate you on those. However, you do need to know what the two different overhead variants are, and those are rate, and the next one is the efficiency variance. The efficiency variance tells us how much of the total variable overhead was due to using more or fewer hours of the allocation base and anticipated for the actual volume of output. So, like I said again, you do not need to know to evaluate it, but you do know, need to know how to calculate it. The fixed overhead variances comprise of two variances as well. The fixed overhead is split up into the fixed overhead budget variance and the fixed overhead volume variance. Let's take a look at an example to learn how to calculate these variances. We'll use this question to cover the variable overhead and the fixed overhead variances. Now this has a lot of information because you could calculate the direct material and direct labor variances as well, but we're only going to calculate our fixed overhead and variable overhead variances. You can pause this video now and read the question and we'll continue in a minute. When you were reading the question, you would have noted that they allocated variable manufacturing overhead based on direct labor hours and they've already calculated your standard cost which is ten dollars per direct labor hour. Same way they do allocate fixed manufacturing overhead again based on direct labor hour and they've calculated a rate of two dollars fifty as a standard fixed manufacturing overhead rate. The next thing that you need to look for is see what their quantity of production, quantity of actual production which is two thousand flower pots. Let's go ahead and calculate our variances. We're going to start with our variable manufacturing overhead variance first. For your variable manufacturing overhead, you're going to set up the problem just like you did for your direct material and your direct labor. So again, what you have is your standard quantity times standard price on the rightmost column. The middle column will have actual quantity times standard price. And the left column will have actual quantity and actual price. Now all we have to do is plug the numbers into this template. Our variable overhead is allocated based on direct labor hours. So for quantity, we use the quantity of direct labor hours. Our standard quantity of direct labor hours per planter is two hours. That again is the quantity for one planter, but what is our volume? Our volume was 2,000 planters. So our standard quantity of direct labor would have been 4,000, 2,000 times 2. We allocate, they calculate a standard price of $10 per variable overhead. That's your standard cost for your variable manufacturing overhead. So 2,000 times 2 times 10 is the number that you would put on your right-hand column, which is your standard variable manufacturing overhead cost of $40,000. Next. Our actual quantity, they tell you that for the 2,000 planters, you actually used 2.1 labor hours per planter. So your actual quantity would be 2,000 times 2.1, and the standard price is 10. So what you get for that number is 42,000. Your actual, you don't have to calculate. They told you that the actual variable manufacturing overhead was 44,100. Now we got the three numbers, you can calculate your variances. First, we're going to calculate your efficiency variance. Variable overhead efficiency variance is the difference between 42,000 and 40,000, which is $2,000. Now, is that $2,000 a favorable or an unfavorable variance? Let's look, I said we always go from right to left. We expected 40,000, we actually spent 42,000. We spent 2,000 more than we should have, therefore it's an unfavorable variance. 
Next, we're going to calculate our variable overhead rate variance. Our rate variance is the difference between 42000 and 44100 a difference of $2,100. Is it favorable or unfavorable? By now, you all know how to figure it out. We expected 42000 We actually spent 44100 We spent more than we should. Therefore, it's an unfavorable variance. Since this is variable manufacturing overhead, the sum of your variable overhead rate and vari variable overhead efficiency variances will give you your flexible budget variance. The flexible budget variance, we expected 40,000. We ended up with 44,100. It's 4,100 is your variance. Is it favorable or unfavorable? It is an unfavorable variance. We're going to talk about how to calculate your fixed manufacturing overhead variances next. For your fixed manufacturing overhead variance, we do not put the same template that we used for direct material, direct labor, and variable manufacturing overhead variance. We use a different template. You still have, will have three columns. The rightmost column will say standard fixed overhead allocated to production. The middle column will be your budgeted fixed overhead and the leftmost column would be your actual overhead actual fixed overhead we're going to use the numbers for the problem that we used to calculate variable manufacturing overhead the problem about the planters if you've forgotten the information be sure to go back and read the question the standard fixed overhead allocated to production is calculated the same way that we calculated the rightmost column for your variable manufacturing overhead. We know that standard overhead is allocated to production based on direct labor hours. Each planter takes two direct labor hours and we manufactured 2,000 planters during the period so we're going to allocate f uh, fixed manufacturing overhead based on 4,000 direct labor hours. The rate, standard rate for fixed manufacturing overhead is 250 per direct labor hour. You multiply the 4,000 hours times 250, giving you 10,000 as your standard cost for fixed overhead. Next, we're going to look at budgeted fixed overhead, which is your middle column. You don't need to do any calculation because they have given you that number. So budgeted fixed overhead is 8,800. Now the only thing left to do is figure out what our actual fixed overhead is. Again, we don't need to calculate it because they've given it to you in your data table. Now that we have all our numbers in place, we can calculate your variances. The volume variance will be the first one we calculate. The volume variance is the difference between your allocated and your budgeted. Your allocated fixed overhead was 10,000, which is right here, and your budgeted fixed overhead was 8,800 a difference of $1,200. Is this $1,200 a favorable variance or an unfavorable variance? Again, we go from our right to the left. So 10000 is more than 8800 This is a cost. Therefore, it is a favorable variance. Next, let's calculate our budget variance, fixed overhead budget variance. We're comparing our budgeted overhead with actual fixed overhead. This is a different uh, difference of $1,400. Now, is this favorable or unfavorable? Again, we're going from left to right. 8,800 is what we expected. 10,200 is what we have. It is a unfavorable variance. Remember, the total of our fixed overhead budget variance and the fixed overhead volume variance does not equal the flexible budget variance. What we have is $200 variance. We call that a total fixed manufacturing overhead variance. That $200 variance is the difference between your actual $10,200 and your standard, which was allocated, which is $10,000 difference is $200. Is that favorable or unfavorable? We're going from right to left and we find that these are costs. So we expected $10,000. We ended up with $10,200. Therefore, it is an unfavorable variance. The fixed overhead volume variance measures the utilization of fixed capacity costs. 
This slide helps explain how if production volume is greater than what we anticipate, then the fixed overhead has been overallocated and the fixed overhead volume var variance is favorable. If production is less than anticipated, fixed overhead has been underallocated and the fixed overhead volume variance is unfavorable. I know there's a lot of words and um, I tell my students to remember it in a different way. There's a very easy way to remember this and I'll show you how that's done next. This is the problem we just worked on and we ended up with the 1,200 favorable fixed manufacturing volume variance. So to figure out if manufacturing overhead has been underallocated or overallocated, there's a very simple rule. You look at your fixed manufacturing overhead volume variance, which is the one that's right here, and the rule is that if you've got an unfavorable variance, it's underallocated. So if you've got an unfavorable variance, manufacturing overhead has been underallocated. The easy way to remember is unfavorable variance is, is depicted by a U and underallocated also begins with a U. So if it's unfavorable, it's underallocated. If you have a favorable variance, then your manufacturing overhead has been overallocated. Now you can evaluate your variance. We calculate a fixed manufacturing overhead volume variance of 1200 favorable. So does this mean that overhead, fixed overhead was over allocated or under allocated to our products? Our variance for the favorable variance and therefore you know that it was over allocated. If you had ended up with an unfavorable variance, it would have been under allocated. Unfavorable starts with the same as under allocated. In this case, it wasn't. It was over allocated to production. This brings us to the end of chapter 11. Be sure to write down either your templates or your formulas and bring them to class because all the questions that we'll be doing in class, you will be using um, those formulas or the templates to come up with your answers.